This is a plastic bottle. Plastic. Produced in countless sizes, shapes and colors, plastic is a part of our everyday life. In 2016 alone, global plastic production was around 355 million tons. Whether in the building and construction industry, in agriculture or in the packaging industry. For plastic, there is a use in many different sectors. Even cosmetics and personal care products are enriched with microplastic beads. However, high production rates also lead to enormous amounts of waste. Plastic waste. And with that in mind, let's once again return to our plastic bottle from the beginning. Due to uncontrolled dumping and poor recycling, chances are quite high that our plastic bottle will one day end up in the ocean. Transported by rivers, canals, rainwater and wind, it is estimated that about 10% of all plastic waste reach into the marine environment. The increasing concentration of plastic particles in the oceans and the associated contamination of the waters endanger numerous organisms. Plastic is known to contain high levels of biological additives such as UV stabilizers, plasticizers and flame retardants. Marine mammals, seabirds and fish get caught in plastic fragments and ingest them. By ingesting plastic particles, the digestion and normal eating behavior is disturbed. Plastic can be divided into two size categories. Macroplastic with a size of over 5 mm and microplastic with a size of less than 5 mm. However, microplastic does not have the shape of a small plastic bottle. It rather looks like small particles and fibers. On the one hand, microplastics are produced by fragmentation and photodegradation of larger plastic fragments. This type of microplastic is called secondary microplastic. On the other hand, microplastics are produced in form of microbeads for industrial purposes. Primary microplastic. Minimal biodegradability, a slow aging process and a high buoyancy are characteristic properties of the material and the reason for its ubiquity in the marine environment. Microplastic particles are found in coastal areas, in the Arctic, Antarctic, in ocean surface waters and in deep sea areas. Finally, transport processes carried out by benthic organisms such as bioturbation lead to a transport of the particles into the sediment. The concentration of microplastics in marine sediments can vary greatly depending on the location and can reach up to 3320 particles per liter. The impact of microplastic particles on the marine ecosystem has been the focus of many scientific studies. However, far-reaching consequences of ocean pollution are largely unexplored. At this point, each of us can make their own contribution to prevent that images like this one become the norm. I hope you liked the first episode of Facts to Go. If so, please leave a like and subscribe to this channel for more videos. All the literature I used is listed in the description down below. Thanks for watching and have a nice day!